Welcome to another server lab tutorial. I'm Shane Rainville. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to combine HashiCorp Vault with Ansible so that we can store our sensitive information in a very secure manner. Now, it's generally accepted that your application's code needs to be in version control somewhere. The same holds true for configuration management. Chances are, whether you're deploying an application or you're configuring a service on a host, you're going to have sensitive information such as credentials, SSH private keys, a variety of information that really should not be in version control. It shouldn't be anywhere that could be publicly accessible. This is where HashiCorp Vault steps in. We can store all our sensitive information on a separate host in a very secure manner. Now we're not going to focus on how to actually install HashiCorp Vault, uh, that's, a, that's for another topic. But what we are going to do is show you how to take your sensitive information, place it into the vault, and then extract it using an Ansible playbook. So without further ado, let's begin. So in this example, we are going to use WordPress. Uh, we're going to be deploying it to a target server, uh, but we're going to take our sensitive database connection information and, set, and instead of storing it inside of our playbooks, which is a big security no-no, we're gonna separate it. And we're putting it into HashiCorp Vault. Um, so what we need to do is, from the command line, uh, we need to actually log into the Vault server. Okay, it's gonna ask for a token. Uh, the token is basically what your administrator should give you, um, or it's what's assigned when you actually uh, start Vault for the first time. Now, every user account should have its own token, and it should only provide the privileges that that user actually needs. You should also be providing a token for every uh, application that you're deploying, and that way, that application can only pull from Vault, and it's not shared by anyone else. It's never used by day-to-day -day operations. Um, so that's just something that I would recommend. So let's take our token and let's enter it in. Okay, uh, now we've successfully logged into the Vault server. Um, now we have to actually write our sensitive information inside of Vault. Uh, you have to set the little partition path where you want to store it. Um, so we're going to do that now. So we have secret, and we're going to put it under server lab, production, and DB. So this is going to be our production database connection information. Uh, we have to set the values, so we're going to use uh, username. So this is going to be the user that we connect to the database with. Now we'll set our password. Uh, we'll also set our host. Um, typically you wouldn't need to put this into a vault. You can probably uh, keep this inside of the playbook itself, but we're just going to show you that we can set multiple values. So that's the only reason that it's here. And then finally, we're going to put in our database name. The same thing if the server probably doesn't need to be here. Great. So now that's successfully stored in Vault. And we can verify that by reading from uh, that little partition that we just created. And those are our values. Perfect. So let's take a look at our blog uh, playbook that we're going to use to actually configure our um, web server. Okay, so three key things that we're going to look at here under vars is we have three variables, one for the vault URL. So this is going to be the URL to our vault server with the port number. Important. This is how we're going to connect to it. We also need to specify a token. So like I was saying, this token needs to be specific to just this job and it should not be shared by anyone else. There is no reason why anyone else, any other deployment should be using this token. Um, this way we can invalidate this token if uh, it's leaked or something happens and we're not affecting anyone else or any other application. Okay, and thirdly, here's our uh, variable. Uh, server lab underscore db so we're, we're creating this variable and it's going to be used to store all that information um, that we're querying from the hashicorp vault and we're doing a lookup using the hashi underscore vault key 
Remember, we're, here's the partition that we stored our information in, so we're setting that as a, the secret. And then the token, so we're bringing in the token variable that we set here. And finally, the URL, like the token, it's a variable, and we've set it here. Okay, so pretty simplistic playbook. We're only doing two things. Uh, we have an Apache 2 role, which is going to install and configure Apache. And then we have our WordPress role, which is going to deploy WordPress onto the server and then configure it. Let's take a look at the uh, WordPress role that we have. It only has two tasks. Uh, we have the first one, which is for Git, and we're actually cloning from the official WordPress repository down onto our application server. Uh, we're specifying which version we want. Um, nothing more, pretty simple. Second, we're configuring WordPress. So we're creating the WP config file that you would have to manually uh, set if you were deploying WordPress. And we're gonna use our template populate the database information and then drop that onto the server. So when we're using HashiCorp Vault and we're bringing that, the, the values into a variable inside of Ansible, um, it's a dict, but we can't just access that dict. We actually have to use this with items line in our uh, playbook for this task. And then we have to specify that dict as, a, as a, an item. Um, so if you remember, this is the variable we set for that. Okay, so let's take a look at the template itself. Okay, if you're familiar with WordPress, you've seen this all before. If you're not, this is the key area that we're focused on. Uh, this is our database uh, connection information. So we, here we have the database name and we see that this is a Jinja2 template, so this is how you specify uh, those variables. And we are calling the server lab underscore db variable, and the value that it's storing is dot name, so the database name. Same thing with username, password, host. With all that done, uh, we can actually start looking at uh, deploying this. So let's run our playbook now. So we're gonna go through all the steps. Um, a lot of this I've already done just to speed things up. And we see that nothing has actually changed because I've already actually ran, ran this. Um, but it's good enough to show you that these values are being used. We can see inside of the Ansible output that information. Um, we'll see that here. So here's all the information that we have from the vault. Now, why don't we change one of these values? We're gonna go back and we're do we're gonna do another write. So whatever we do here is gonna overwrite what we whatever we had previously. So uh, let's replace this with super secret password. Okay, we've successfully written it, um, and now let's run our playbook again. Great, so in the first attempt, uh, nothing actually happened. We didn't change anything. We've already It was already deployed in the past and nothing was actually different, so it actually skipped a step. And we know that because it says okay. In our second attempt, because we changed the password uh, for our database, uh, we can see that the WordPress configuring task was uh, actually changed. And we can see that there's our newly set password so that's all done. Uh, why don't we take a look at the actual config on the actual server just to validate that our settings are indeed being uh, stored inside of that file. Okay, so this is where we're deploying everything to and we have our WP config file. And there you have it, there's all the information. Those are the credentials that we stored inside a vault. And now you know how to keep your secrets secure in a vault and then query them using your Ansible playbook and configuring your servers. And by doing so, we've separated our configuration 
playbook uh, stuff from our sensitive information, the two of which should never be stored together. Uh, you never know, someone may access your playbook and then they have full access to all your servers because they have that sen sensitive information. Uh, so this is a best practice. You should never keep your sensitive information inside of your configuration management scripts. And with that, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, make sure that you click the like button at the bottom. Uh, also, if you found it interesting, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We hope to keep putting more content on on a frequent basis.